Hail, hail, the Celts are here, and what the hell do we care now, guys? We got the three points, we beat St Mirren by two goals to one, but that does not begin to even tell half of the story. It was a roller coaster of emotions from the first whistle to the last. We did not expect the starting 11 that we've seen, and the substitutions definitely took us by surprise as well. In the video today, we're going to be having a look at what we learned, what we've seen from Celtic versus St Mirren last night. As we look ahead to the weekend, we're going to be playing Ross County in a, an important away match. We need to be in good form, in good good fetal because then we are going away to the Wanda Metropolitano in the Champions League to play Atletico Madrid at any point in the video today if you laugh you learn you like something or you know whatever please do like and subscribe to the channel share and retweet and all that good stuff guys we are pushing for 10,000 subscribers on the channel and we cannot do that without your support guys so if you do enjoy the content hit the subscribe button hit the like button get comfy and jump into the comment section and let me know what your big takeaway was from last night and yeah Let's just get stuck straight into it. When the team sheet first came out, the first thing that I think slapped everyone across the face was Turnbull, Phillips and Forrest. All three of them coming in and we see Dyson Maeda, Carter Vickers rotated and Bernardo. Okay, that surprised me a lot because Bernardo was on media duties pre-game. So that kind of tells me straight away that I'm never reading into that again. But we start with Phillips. Now, I'm going to read between the lines on this one quite a lot because Lager BLK, we spent good money on him and him and Scales had a nice little kind of partnership, little clean sheet run kind of developing. Nowhere in the squad to be seen. Navroche spent a lot of money on him. He looked really good when he came in, had an injury setback. And he was on the bench last night, didn't feature. We still have Stephen Welsh on the books injured. And obviously scales is everything to everyone. But we brought Nat Phillips in on this kind of emergency loan between, you know, when we brought him in in January because we had a lot of injuries to people we'd spent money on and we're going into a crucial part of the season. Now, I'm sure this guy's got his contract all laid out and we're paying his wages or a portion of it and all the rest of it. But when I see that team going out last night and I'm sure Carter Vickers needs the rest. I'm sure he needs the rotation, relief, etc. I'm totally... I get that. I can see it, right? He's just back from two kind of big injuries within the last eight months or so requiring surgery. I get it. But when I see Phillips starting, like no lager be okay in the squad, unless we're deciding again that this guy's bombed out, he's not good enough. I don't get that. I don't get where that came from, though, to be quite honest with you. But if it's not that, the only reason I can imagine that this guy's actually played over players that we own and have spent money on and want to develop is he must be promised a medal. You know, when he was getting his loan deal coming up here and it was like, it was quite last minute. It's like, yeah, yeah. I can imagine it now. Yeah, don't worry, Nat. You'll get however many games you need and you'll get a medal at the end of it. That's kind of the way it felt. Now, no harm to the guy. He did kind of okay. And like I say, he's never done anything great. He's never really done anything terrible either. I say no harm to him. He'll know the situation. We've got lots of centre-backs there. And I just, when I seen that, that was just the first kind of feeling I got around it. Maybe let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. But, you know, like Lager Belke is getting left at home, spent a lot of money on him. Like I've mentioned already, like, you know, we've spent minutes on him as well. I mentioned that in the last video. We'll come on to that shortly about minutes we've already invested this season in developing some of the players. The manager, Brendan Rodgers, is already identified in the press conference saying, yes, we've got lots of developmental players in the squad. We could do with a few more finished articles. He's already been quoted to saying something to that effect. And Lager Belke firmly comes into that category and playing third in the table at home in a must-win game, we need to rest Carter Vickers for whatever reason, then why do we not bring in laggers, you know? So just wanted to throw that one out there. Now, the one that everyone, or the other two that everyone is really talking about here was the inclusion of David Turnbull from the start as well as James Forrest. Now, we'll start with Turnbull because I did mention in the preview video that we did coming into this that it seemed to be Bernardo because he did the media, but... Previously, like we've seen with the substitution we had in the last match as well, Rodgers likes a midfield of McGregor, Turnbull and O'Reilly. He played it a bit in pre-season and we've seen it early season, at home especially, be very effective in a kind of gung-ho, all-out attack approach. So when I did see this, I wasn't as surprised as the average Celtic fan, let's say. So yes, it's disappointing. I know he's not everyone's cup of tea, but David Turnbull is... Like a great football player, you hear pundits and everything talk about the quality and depth that Celtic have, their ability to play their second string guys that can still score goals. He scores his goal from the edge of the box, he misses his penalty. But it's David Turnbull is the guy that they're really thinking of. If David Turnbull was playing for any other team in the SPFL, he'd be on for 15, 20 goals a season, including set pieces for my money. So I do feel that he gets a hard time. And like I say, I know style of play-wise, he's maybe not everyone's cup of tea. But there's a huge hypocrisy that does come in Every Celtic fan has it with transfers where we see guys like John McGinn or Hickey. These guys move on, they go to Italy, they go to England and they really flourish and become elite professionals. 
They only get to that point because they go, they have that adventure, they get that experience, they play all of those minutes in those environments. That's what creates them into the players that they are. David Turnbull hasn't been on that adventure, hasn't had that experience. He chose because we went for him, we bought him, we signed him to come here and have the development that he has to this point. So I do feel really bad because he is clearly like a very good attacking player but the way that Ange molded the team last season and even the way that Rodgers is still with the developmental players that were brought in there's there's no you know it does feel like Turnbull is a bit of a square peg here yes he got his goal from edge of the box he made a big impression early on in the game he get he's given it this to the fans because he knows he's not everyone's cup of tea he's a bit of a marmite but after that he misses the penalty and it really does go MIA it doesn't really influence the match too much and he doesn't you know impact the game like he should do David Turnbull for me I love having players like this at Celtic that are domestic gods you know guys that when you play St Mirren you play Motherwell you play any one of the who and whoever's in the top six or you know whatever will score a goal will be better than them and will do the business we've seen it over my whole lifetime at Celtic we've always had guys that are like in the squads to be effective in the league and the main gripe we have as Celtic fans normally is like are they Champions League level but with Turnbull it's at the point where people don't even see the value of him in the league and I just think that's that's a bit sad because he is like he scores goals for us you cannot deny the production that Turnbull's given us so I do feel a bit of sympathy for him in that situation where he has produced a goal. We have been on to win the match, but a lot of people won't remember that part of it. It is just, you know, he's not Hitati. He's not world class. And it kind of comes into the same thing with James Forrest as well, because again, he's not up and coming. He's not a guy we've went out and signed, but Forrest has been at the club. He just had a bloody testimonial. He's been at the club since he was 12. And, you know, like you can bring this guy in. And again, I don't know if it's a game like, last night you really want to be using him but he'll take the man on the dribble he knows the right place to be at the right time again he had a big chance missed in this match he will be disappointed that two games in a row he could have influenced the scoreline and you know I think James Forrest is one of these guys that if he does score if he does get the assist 60% of the Celtic fan base turn on him and we all love him again for a couple of weeks until he's getting minutes where people don't think he's earned it or he's worthy of it but yeah, he done his bit and he kind of chucked, you know, he, he done his bit and kind of helped out. But like the team overall, again, is just suffering from a lack of synergy. The first half was very pedestrian, a lot of sideways passing and it really went nowhere. But for me, this starting 11 really points to Luis Palma. This is a game where we're not got Rio Hitati, we're not starting Dyson Maeda. The onus is on you. You are the number seven. You have been brought in to be the talisman, the main guy. Now, I think Luis Palma checks out the content on the channel because I did see an extra effort in him to try and take people on and go by a man. He is a bit unlucky with the rebound from the penalty. Maybe he scores that. And again, we're looking at him in a slightly different light because again, similar to Turnbull, he has actually been scoring goals and making assists. He's been racking these kind of scores up. But this was a game where he had to show up. He had to be the man that ran the game and, you know, make things happen. And he really didn't overall. He did try. There was endeavour. He does have technique. He does have the ability to do some stuff, but he is not a winger. It's just, that's just the, the long and short of it for me. Now, as much as I think Luis Palma checks out the content here on the channel, I'm not too sure he subscribes or likes the videos right enough. Uh, it's clear to see Brendan Rodgers is clearly a subscriber at the Celts are here, and he really enjoyed the preview video that we did a few days ago. And the second half for me is the real story of the game. It's the part where we see some progress. We see some development. We see some green shoots of players that could take the team on, replace some guys that are out and make a name for themselves. Now the first substitutions that Brendan made was changing the wingers and this felt like this was rehearsed, this was something coming into the game because Dyson, as we've seen in the last match, it was clear to see his minutes are getting managed ahead of this upcoming kind of vortex of fixtures that the manager is referencing in the press conferences. But as soon as Dyson comes on and as soon as Yang comes on, there was a real uplift in the game, having genuine pace and creativity come from both sides of the pitch. Guys that are hungry, guys that are eager to do well and Dyson is clearly one of our best forwards there's no two ways about it but Yang was showing again the promise that we spoke about on the channel that he's clearly showed the thing I love about Yang is everything he does is like the right thing he tries to take his man on he tries to go by people he puts balls into the right area and he's always hungry to go forward and it really felt that he's seen this game as a real opportunity where he can take over from Palma he could show the difference in playing him versus Palma and how like he could actually be a best 11 player for us it seemed like he was on the pitch out there to take the shirt to take the opportunity and to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and Celtic fans, that's what we want from a winger. We want a guy like this that will take somebody on, beat him, take a man on, get into space, 
get into the box and look for the forwards, look for the goal scoring talent that we have to go and put it away. Unfortunately, nothing actually materialised for Yang as the game went on, but he was at the centre of everything exciting and repeatedly throughout the second half, we were looking for him, looking for him, looking for him because he was taking men on and beating them. And that's what you need from your wingers is they need to be able to create something when the opposition is banking in and trying to hold on to the result. Now, coming into this game, we did expect that O'Reilly's minutes, we expected O'Reilly probably wouldn't get the 90. And, you know, we were asking for home, where is he? Bernardo doesn't seem to be able to pass forward. And Odenholm, early season, done a great job of kind of looking and feeling like he was in the Hatate mold and could like fill in and, and you know fill in his shoes eventually. He make, he comes on for O'Reilly and very similar to Yang, it is clear that Odenholm is on the pitch to take his opportunity. He sees that there's a spot in this best in living in midfield alongside O'Reilly, alongside McGregor, and he's coming onto the pitch saying, "I'm." making it mine. I got that red card against Feyenoord and I'm going to make up for it. And he, him and Yang were the stars of the show. They were out there to win their jersey, to get into the best of living. And both of them can see that their spot is there to be gotten. It's amazing having a competitive squad with lots of young up and coming players. But we've seen recently that if they don't think they can get into the starting 11, how effective they are from the bench is, you know, sometimes it can have a little bit to be desired. But when those guys came on last night, you could see it. They were thinking, I can get in this team. I can make this shirt mine. And that was the difference, I think, in having players that are hungry, that are pushing, and have the capability, have the abilities in their boots to dribble, to go by people, to play balls into the channel, to put your body in where it hurts and do whatever it takes for the team. But as much as all this extra endeavour was looking good and we were chapping at the door, we still just weren't getting somebody on the end of the ball Dyson was tucking in I think we swapped wings once or twice maybe not but it just wasn't coming too much and this is how you know Brendan was watching the video last week because he takes off Turnbull and he puts on O now the thing that I loved about this change so much is because we asked about this last week in terms of O is he good enough can he be effective and you know with the amount of minutes he's getting he's feeding off his scraps how can the guy actually develop as a player at least under Postacoglu he was getting a consistent like 20 to 30 minutes per game and, you know, we were at the point last week of saying, well, we still needed goals. Why take off Kyogo for O? You don't really change the dynamic too much. We need a goal. We should be playing them together. And that's exactly what we got. David Turnbull come off and McGregor and Holm went into this lovely double pivot, which was very feisty and, you know, probably a little bit underspoken about in the post-match. Very good at keeping the play up. And again, we were just continuously looking for Yang on the left-hand side and we were just filling it up with these guys here. And with Kyogo coming in deep, of course, you see how the, the winning goal happens where we play it into Holm and Holm manages to get the flick on and oh again very maybe not very similar but I definitely think he believes that front three spot he could maybe squeeze one of them into his own maybe we could do something else with Kyogo but he's on thinking I'm here to prove myself I'm here to show what I'm made of and as soon as that ball came to him he was in no doubt where he was putting it and how hard he was going to hit it and uh, great goal from O great assist from Thiago home as well great to see those guys you know that up and coming crop that we've got contributing to a huge three points at home. And for me, I do think this was the real story of the game was those guys coming on and, you know, saying we are the next gen Celtic team and we're good enough. Great to see from them. Now, the one thing that did finish the game off that really, really severed me, like, first of all, let's say Kyogo, for me, should have been on the penalty. He's been dying to take a penalty. Hitati is always on them. Even if Kyogo gets fouled, Hitati was on them. Hitati is now out the team and I'm thinking Kyogo should be on penalties. And when we won the penalty last night, you know, Kyogo's even got the ball in his hands and he gets given to Turnbull again and Turnbull obviously doesn't score it. The wee man must have been fuming. But see, in the second half, I can't remember if it was 2-1 or if it was 1 each, but he was the wee man was through. Breakaway counter-attack situation and he should have been slipping in Dyson to be one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper and maybe Dyson takes a shot and scores. But Dyson is not a selfish character. If he thought he could have laid it off for Kyogo to run onto for an easy tap-in, it's not unimaginable that that could have happened. But Kyogo decided to play the ball to O because O was a little bit wider and O was way more likely to have to pick up Kyogo on the edge of the box rather than trying to play the ball into Dyson. And obviously O ultimately tries to play the ball into Dyson and St Mirren snuff it out. It didn't come to anything. Kyogo's on the edge of the box with his arms around going, why didn't you play it to me? And see, as soon as I've seen that, I just thought that's... Ve I've seen that a few times this season. Kyogo and Dyson do not assist and score off of one another anywhere near the way they should. For what we believe them to be, like selfless, hard-working, pressing good team ethic and all that good stuff. Kyogo should have been slipping him in because see if it was the other way around, Kyogo would have been spitting feathers. If he was on the shoulder of the last man and Dyson was breaking, you know Dyson is going to play Kyogo through one-on-one. -on -one. And for Kyogo not to do the same, I thought it was, I thought it was 
toxic, to be honest with you. And Kyogo maybe able to smile and laugh it off afterwards. Even at the very end, he's through one on one with the goalkeeper and he tries a sh- you know, he tries a chip, he tries to be the hero, he scores a nice like highlight real goal. But he's not scored in a couple of games. He should just be looking to get that into the back of the net and make it count. And I don't know. I was not happy with Kyogo at the end of the night. I thought that was a bit of his character that I didn't think he had in him. And I'll be really looking to see in the next match. I want to see him be super selfless. I know he needs to be selfish in terms of scoring goals. But when you're through like that and you've got two options, one man that's on to have a one-on-one with the keeper or the centre forward who's wide on the left-hand side who might then be playing across. He's made that decision totally selfishly. And again, the little chip thing just kind of compounded it, that he he wanted a hero. He wanted to be a hero moment and he didn't get it. Now at this point, I don't really feel confident in trying to predict what team we're going to play at the weekend because it's hard to work out what Roger's idea is in terms of rotation. Are we going to bring Vickers in for this match so he can play Saturday, Wednesday and get up to speed and this was a nice full week off? You know, is it three games in seven days he can't do? But can he do two games in four days? You know, what is the thinking there? And the performances of Yang, I think home has to start against Ross County. Yang, Palma, Forrest, I'm not too sure where Rogers sees all of those guys. And like I say, the defender situation, I'm still not too sure. Let me know what you guys think. But for Ross County going away, I think home has to start. He's not um, suspended anymore for Europe. So against Atletico Madrid, would we want Bernardo? Would we want Turnbull? I would, you know, let's give home a shot maybe. Let's see how it all works out. So yeah, we definitely came out of the St. Mirren game with a lot of questions coming into Ross County because again, Luis Palma, when he comes off, he looks dejected and he's not contributed anything to the match. He's had a couple of starts in a row and he scored some goals, he's made some assists. Yeah, but if you actually watch the performances, like I've said, he doesn't contribute enough as a final third, as a winger. Does Rogers bring him off? Does he give Yang the minutes? It'll be really interesting to see. Let me know all the thoughts you've got about the video, guys, in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and retweet. And on the screen, there now is some other stuff that we've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Hail, hail, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.